Let's look at leprosy of the garment. So already put your garment caps on, you know, your garments are your works. Let's remember that. And when a garment has an infection of leprosy in it, in a woolen garment or in a linen garment, so when your works, your deeds become infected, there's something hidden inside that's being manifested out. Or in the warp or in the weft of linen or wool or in the leather or in any leather work, and the infection shall be greenish or reddish in the garment or in the leather or in the warp or in the weft or in any leather object, it is an infection of leprosy and shall be shown to the priest. So, yeah, what do garments represent? Your deeds, your works, or lack thereof. And the priest shall look at the infection and shut up the infected one seven days. This is the equivalent to being put out of the camp, you know, being put into quarantine. And he shall look at the infection on the seventh day. Same process. And when the infection has spread in the garment or in the warp or in the weft or in the leather or any leather work, the infection is an act of leprosy. It is unclean. And he shall burn that garment or the warp or the weft in wool or in linen or any leather object in which the infection is, for it is an act of leprosy. It is burnt with fire. That's interesting. Uh, it reminds me of the passage... Um, I think it's Hebrews, when he says that all our works will be put through the fire, whether of gold, silver, wood, and hay. The garments are being put through the fire. But if the priest looks and sees that the infection has not spread in the garment, or in the warp, or in the weft, or in any leather object, then the priest shall give the command, and they shall wash that garment which the infection is. And he shall shut it up another seven days. Again, same process for the garment as for the person. And the priest shall look at the infection after it has been washed and see if the infection has not changed its appearance. Though the infection has not spread, it is unclean. Burn it in the fire. It is eaten away in its inside or outside. This is interesting. Like Even if, there, even if you stop sinning, but then there's no sign of change. So let's say the sin has been stopped or removed. If you still don't change, you're burnt. This, to me, it really hit me hard, this idea of complacency, not wanting to better oneself. Apathy. Because you can go, oh, well, okay, I'll stop doing that. But then you just stay where you are. You're not moving forward. And if the priest shall look and see that the infection has faded after washing it, then he shall tear it out of the garment or out of the warp or out of the weft or out of the leather. And if it is still seen in the garment or in the warp or in the weft or in any leather object, it is a spreading infection. Again, it's malignant. Burn it with fire, that in which the infection is. And if you wash the garment or in the warp or in the weft or in a leather object, if the infection has disappeared from it, then it shall be washed a second time and shall be clean. It had to be visible. This is the interesting thing. You had, you had to be able to make a visible discernment whether there was a change. And the change had to be a shrinking. It, di it didn't say if it disappeared. It said if it shrunk, which is interesting. It is only when sin has visibly shrunk that the cloth was kept. So let's, let's look at this. The, the garment has had an infection and then it's shrank and it's been torn out, okay? This is speaking of a garment, that, a garment, someone's deeds, that has had sin, but it has had it torn out of its life. Not cut, torn. This is like quite a painful process, shall we say. It is safe to assume that this is someone who has been put through the fire and has had some experience in wisdom. You know, you've been crushed. A garment that's had the sin ripped out of it is, is a person that's been put through the press and come out the other side with some scars, I'll be it. This garment has a hole in it, maybe several. With this mentality, let's look at what Yeshua said. And he also spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a fresh garment onto an old one. Otherwise, the fresh one makes a tear, 
Also, the piece that was taken out of the fresh one does not match the old. If you look at the context of this, it's all hypocrisy, religious show. The, the, the Pharisees were saying to Yeshua, well, why don't your disciples fast and pray like we do? And look at us being so holy. And, he's, and so he's pointing out hypocrisy. The old cloth, that which has been put through the refinery and has some holes in it, has shrunk. Look, because you, you don't put fresh cloth on because it will shrink once you've washed it and then it tears the, the old garment. So old cloth has shrunk after it's been passed through the refinery. It has become lowly, humble, lost the pride by being washed. It was the washing process that made the cloth shrink. So please note, the washing, the refinery, makes you small, not puffed up. The new cloth still has to be humbled by having its leprosy or hidden sealed revealed to the surface and thus torn out. This is what makes it... Do you see the parallel I'm trying to draw? With that in mind, let's look at what Paul said. Trustworthy is the word. If a man longs for the position of an overseer, he desires a good work. An overseer then should be blameless, husband of one wife, sober, sensible, orderly, kind to strangers, able to teach, not given to wine, no brawler, but gentle, not quarrelsome, no lover of money. Oh, that's a big problem today. One who rules his own house well, having his children in subjection with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own children, his own house, sorry, how shall he look after the assembly of Elohim? Not a new convert, lest he become puffed up with pride and fall into the judgment of the devil. Again, you don't put fresh cloth on old cloth. Because the fresh cloth is puffed up. It's got pride problems. You see this when someone who's new or walking the faith and they're all guns blazing and flashing the, the Hebrew this and this. And it's like, calm down. Calm down. Be lowly, be humble, be meek. Let's look at the word for match. The, the piece that was taken does not match the old. This is the Greek word, symphoneo, to be harmonious, to be in agreement. Has this, this idea of being in agreement. If you break down the word symphoneo, it's, it's two words, sum and pho, phone. Uh, with and then sound. So phoné is a tone, so it's basically like a sound, a voice. It can be used of voices, instruments, words, languages. So in harmony, it resonates. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah, that's where we get it from. So when it says it does not match, it does not, it does, it's not in harmony with, that there's like a discord. Yeah, it does not match. The new cloth, i.e. the new convert, will not be in harmony with the old cloth. It's always those that are spiritually immature that cause problems in fellowships, that cause division. Those that have been through the ringer a few times, have been made low, been humbled, that, you know, they'll quietly stand in the background and watch and only step in. Do you see the difference? When put in a position of authority, the new cloth, the new convert, will become puffed up and it will cause a tear in the old cloth. This is why you don't put fresh converts in positions of authority. They will cause a tear. They will, you know when someone has authority and they don't know what to do with it and they kind of like misuse it for their own personal gain? Well, well I have the power, so off you go. They cause a tear. If they don't cause a tear, they cause disunity. The word match has this idea of being in agreement as well. They cause disagreement. The new cloth, listen to this, has to be given the chance to shrink. Then it may be sewn into the garment. Once the new cloth has become old cloth, then you can put it in. How did the new cloth become shrunk? It went through the washing process. It was refined. It had the leprosy brought out. It was torn out. And they still came out the other end. Do, are people connecting the dots that I'm trying to 
I know it's quite a... Yeah. Would this uh, also apply to the idea of teaching? Or teaching and teaching? Well, th this is the next verse. It speaks of, you know, the um, wineskins. The very next verse of that is the wineskins. Um, but I just love the imagery in there. As soon as... When I was reading the, the leprosy of the cloth, and then I realised, hang on, this garment has a hole in it. It's... It, you, everything Yeshua said had purpose. 